that's the thing. Well, to be honest, uh, you'll probably get a lot of people viewing archives too. So that's a hey, drone versus God. I approve of this. Drone method. versus God. Yes. Seriously? Did yes. I miss? Oh, that was off screen. Yes. Awesome. Start now. It would be better if it was Randy versus Goda, but go, Drone go, versus go, go, Goda go, go, go. is great. We're doing Eye of Horus again? Oh, hey, that's fine. It is kind of funny that uh, apparently uh, Drone's going to be limited to the bottom right of the map starting, but huh. whatever. I don't care. That's actually the best place to start on this map if you're in the bottom. Essentially, well, let's see how this works out. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to get started. Get this thing going. For anyone that's curious, um, the best starting build order in Evolution RTS, no matter what map you're on, five metal extractors, one factory, three power plants next to the factory. From there, you can branch out however you want. But if you do that, that will keep you from stalling when you are building uh, units and stuff like that. Also, another thing that you can do is, for example, um, with three power plants, <laughs> drone, uh, with three power plants, you get 15 supply. Now, uh, that's about, what, seven kites, I think? Six or seven? Yeah. Something like Even that. Two. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's five to seven raiders, depending on the factory. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's the game five is starting. Kites. And go to the bottom right corner of the map because he was stuck there, getting going pretty quick. And drone in the top left or center of the map, who has got much more flexibility. But he is a very slightly weaker player than Gode. Although I'm not sure about Evo RTS and Zero K. Drone is the third best player of Zero K. Gode is tied for best with Randy. So just to put it in context, and also to turn the sound on. You always know a true ZK player when they build tons of power plants around their metal extractors. <laughs> I see that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I did that too at first. No, actually, I didn't do that at first. You taught me well, quickly enough. Yeah. Well, oh, one, someone in chat pointing out that it would be a good idea to show the download and installation process from scratch. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is, that's actually a little bit hard to showcase on account of the fact that the install process is the web lobby thing that you get from Steam, and the download process is join a multiplayer game and it automatically downloads the map and the game and the engine. Yeah. I can it's... go over the downloads tab just to show you what you should see, but in all honesty, there isn't actually a whole lot that that doesn't happen automatically. Very little of this game, or very little of Spring happens with, or at least the infrastructural stuff happens with player input. Which can be disconcerting, I know, but it's also something that makes it kind of hard to actually showcase that beyond just, this is how you connect to the lobby, this is how you start a multiplayer game, you need to start a multiplayer game in order to get this stuff to start a single player game, until we actually properly set this up so it's giving you a bunch of stuff by default and you'll automatically download everything you need when it gets in, because that is planned, right, Forb? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Um... That, yeah, when this game's done, I will go over the downloads tab a bit more as well, because that is true. That is an oversight I did not go over. What Thank you mentioned you, there is actually a little bit more difficult to pull off, and I'll explain why a bit later if you remind me. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Drone doing a nice job just keeping, keeping snakes around the map. He went for amphibious bots. Gode, on the other hand, went for hover tanks, which is going to be a little bit interesting. I think in this map, hover tanks are going to have... Entirely an advantage based on who, on knowing where your opponent is. Yes. Drone does have radar. Sorry, Gode does have radar. Drone has radar. Both of them are decently aware of their opponents. But I think Gode Keep is a bit more aware of the meaningful parts of the map. Um, some part of uh, radar that actually makes a difference. Um, amphibious units do not show up on radar. Oh, very good point. Yes. Uh, so basically, as far as his the enemy army, God is more or less. Gode is more or less blind right now. Um, so it's very good to point out that Drone basically can he can close the distance and because amphibious bots rely entirely on being at short range this is extremely useful for Drone right now. So yeah. I'd say right now a matchup advantage is to Drone. Anyway, there's more questions to chat about how to get this game running. Okay, I'm do you think people would mind if I jumped away from this game because that is a really important question. 
Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's no big deal. Okay. So, sorry if you're here to watch Drone vs. Gode, because I know I am, but this is very important. We'll so, make them do it again. I, no, whoops. No. <laughs> make them play the exact same game again. <laughs> do it again, <laughs> now! <laughs> again, with feeling. Now, anyway, so in order to get into the game, the first thing you need to do, as we showed off before, was to connect. Or actually, to register. First, you have to register an account. And then, once you do that, it'll register on the Spring RTS site. From there, you need to go in multiplayer, join a server. When you do that, you'll notice the bottom third of web lobby will fill up with server information. Once that happens, you need to click this button here. That will add a team. Now, it's going to be mildly confusing because the team itself is not needed, but you add a team, and then you click on there to set yourself to the team. And that, and then from there, you hit the start button, which I know is way too small in a lot of cases. This UI needs to be redone. But anyway, you hit the start button, which right now is useless because the game is currently in progress, but when you do that, you'll get a start vote, and then that start vote will lend, set you into the game once it passes, which it will by default because you're only one person. It's if you are one person, however, you want to add bots. Um, like you want to hit this button here. Let me interject one thing. Uh, if you are... If you join a battle that's already running and you click on the start button, you can join the game mid-game. It fast forwards. Uh, it fast forwards to the current time of the game. Sorry. Now, just bearing in mind that, that you need to be a spec for that to work. By the way, that, yes. That's sure. Rather, you will spectate when you do that. But mm -hmm. yeah. So if you add a bot, you choose a bot. Unfortunately, Web Lobby does not limit based on the bots that work. So you want to use any of the survival spawner bots. Pick one of those and then add it. I don't want to actually add one because the game is in progress, but you pick one, the team will be set by default, and then you can start the game. Let me also point out that these are things that are being currently worked on too. So, yeah, uh, there's a lot of little UI things that are being redone, and there's also other lobbies, though I would use Web Lobby. If you're just getting used to it, just use Web Lobby. Don't bother with other lobbies. I mean, I personally use 0K Lobby, but that's just because that's what I started with. Use other lobbies only if you're really comfortable with with the game in general, which if you're asking the question how do I get this game running, just use Web Lobby. Yeah. It's getting worked on. It will if it's not good now, let us know exactly what the problems are, though we probably know what most of them are. And then go to be fixed. So anyway, back to the game. Just to catch up, recap what's been going on. Basically Drone Go ahead. Drone's been kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Drone has been managing a looks at it to actually keep Gode in So Gode is breaking through east side, bunch of crushes coming in, getting rid of a lot of drones, metal extractors. Drone still has a metal advantage by quite a lot, but as it stands, his main advantage came in the use of... Oh, they're gone now, but he had a bunch of Midnights. There we are. Which, Midnights, in case you're wondering, are generated by engineers being near wrecks. Right, for those of you not familiar with Total Annihilation based games, all units in pretty much any Total Annihilation based game, such as Evolution RTS, leave a wreck. Now in Evolution RTS, they're quite simple. There's this energy core here, that's all it is. You either, as the tooltip describes, moving your Overseer or an orb to it, which actually neither player has built an orb, will reclaim it for metal and energy, and moving an engineer near it will get you one of these Midnights. These Midnights are quite weak individually, but can should not be underestimated. A lesson I have taught Forb many a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, quick uh, strategy, interesting tidbit. All units can shoot through each other. Like, if you, all your allied units can shoot through each other. So, it is a perfectly legit strat to hide a longer ranged unit behind a building so that all the shots are absorbed by the building instead of your unit. It's a nice way to kind of help equalize yourself if you're basically getting pushed up against a wall kind of like drone yeah, is so, right now. <laughs> yeah, Gold is really pushing out, especially since the spewers are getting rid of all the midnights. So as as Forb was saying, just to reiterate, basically projectiles are physically simulated. If they hit something, doesn't matter what they were targeting, they hit the first thing they hit. They hit the first thing in their way. Mm -hmm. So cover is actually a thing. Just a natural organic process of the physics engine of the game. So yeah, anyway, Gode going a nice split here. Keeping Drone and Susa. The Drone, I think, might be able to take advantage of this. Couple, 
couple spitters going around the side, which should be able to take out most of this army before it becomes a problem. It's While worth noting, God brought up his overseer. He's about to not, lose it. Not just that, his crushers are the ones getting hit by the drones. They're getting distracted by it. His spewers were getting hit by all the main army. So, got a bit of a mismanagement on... bit of mismicro on that army that split their... Lost. It was not a bad split in terms of distraction, but unfortunately the crushers were in the wrong side of it. If the spewers were at the back and the crushers were at the front, it, this would have gone a lot differently. As it stands though, he's still getting a decent amount of damage done on Drone's army in the bottom, but not very much. And Drone is going to be pushing in, and it looks like he's probably going to be able to finish this off. Maybe. Uh, those gonna, spitters are good. <laughs> those spitters are really good. It'll come down to what... Well, it really comes down to what Gota has planned. He's going entirely for crushers, which are oh. being countered handily oh. by the spitters. And he's going for wildcats, however the wildcats are this haze in the hole. That is... They are doing a very nice job. I don't think there's... Maybe one Ikens. Maybe one Ikens in this army. It just went down. And the Razor's trying to do their best, but the Ikens is the only reliable anti-air that the... Amphibious Tank Factory has, and a couple of them getting in play, they're doing what they can, but these Wildcats do have a lot of health. Gode probably going to go around the map, try to find what static anti air he can find, and just take it out. Take it out with the radar as well, to eliminate the one advantage Drone has had this entire game, or the major advantage he's had this entire game, is the power of radar. So at this point, right now, Drone does still have radar coverage on the left side of the map. He still has enough radar that it's fine, but the last... Now that second radar is taking some damage. The Wildcats not being actually very well micro. They're being moved around a bit. They aren't focus firing anything. And Wildcats need to be focus fired to be useful. One big strategy tip. Wildcats, in order to live long enough to actually be useful, need to focus fire. They can actually focus fire this Copperhead and kill it. All five of those could have killed that Copperhead in two shots. Mm -hmm. Unless a major nerf has happened that in the last two weeks. I don't no. know. It probably would have lost one or two of them, but it would have been a worthwhile cost. Because that would be basically destroys everything. However, Drone is getting a bunch of He's getting a bunch of coyotes on his own, and those anti-air fighters, they'll get rid of the wildcats and possibly get... Well, depending on what Gaudet builds next, he is getting coyotes of his own, which means it's going to come down to coyote count. But as that happens, Drone still ahead. has ground advantage. Yeah. yeah, massive economy advantage. He has ground army advantage. While the air war gets fought... And actually, it looks like Drone has won the air war, at least the first oh. opening battle. He would if he was targeting the tart. The coyote, he would, but however, is. the biggest thing is these wildcats. He needs to get rid of those first. Because that way his ground armor can just push through and it won't matter what's in the air. Drone just went from looking fairly bad to really good. <laughs> With those coyotes, those just pretty much put him back in a good spot. Wildcats up for him as well. He is getting, getting rid of these crushers handily. I don't think any... Aren't there going to be any spewers left here? There are a few. There are some spears being built up for Gode. Although Gode, I think he's... No, he's not building anything. I thought it was supply block maybe, but he's not. He's just not building anything. So it looks like Drone really is quite ahead right now. Yeah, he really is. Uh, he was starting so to get cut Okay, Gode half. is starting to rebuild again. Oh, I was Gode just is saying that he was status. starting to get cut in half, and then all of a sudden those coyotes came out and everything just kind of changed. <laughs> They sure did. I mean, at this point, Crusher's coming through, but Drone keeping the north side solid. He's still getting split a bit. I mean, Gode still has this weak point to go for, and Drone has not reconsolidated that center. So the southwest is still slightly weak. Gode can't quite kill it out with impunity, because there are the Wildcats here. They're getting in the way. The Spewers are going to try to deal with that. But trying to surround that is going to be difficult, especially being that there's a ton of Wildcats coming out of there. And Gode trying to reverse this, getting a bunch of coyotes of his own. But it's not going to help too much. These Spaz is doing what they can. Slowing down the copper, or stunning the copperheads out entirely. The Icons is, however, filling in where those stop. And Spazes don't deal that much damage on their own. They basically just deal EMP damage. Yeah. Or do they deal damage at all? They don't deal damage at all yet. The uh, the thing that makes them deal actual damage doesn't work. Is in the test version? Oh. Yeah, it's in it's in a test version, but uh, it's not live yet. I want to refine right. it a little better. But yeah, these so, these spas are actually really good because they can stun these defenses and basically make them worthless for a moment. Anyway, the copperhead being the big one because at this point that's 
what dr all the drone has right here to get rid of the wildcats that are coming through. Actually, get rid of the cop the coyotes coming through. And at this point, crushers coming through again. Spaz is able to stop the emulators from stopping the crushers. Crusher, however, are not able to target the wildcats, and the wildcats able to get through this. And a bunch of midnights as well. Drone really enjoys going those. He doesn't seem to be doing a lot of reclaim. Like I said, neither player has built any orbs yet, which is not entirely surprising. Being that they're not units that, I mean, they're units that you kind of have to play for a while of Nova. And Gode throws in the towel. Drone winning out against Gode, and that was game. I kind of wish I could see in the middle half of that, but yeah, you missed some pretty awesome. Uh... <laughs> uh, well, it was worth it to teach people who are watching how to start a game in a rather rambling and rapid and rushed way. I apologize. I might go over that again just to reiterate because it. It bears repeating, mm -hmm. which is really a sad statement to make. But yes, it does bear repeating, ultimately, one way or another. And players are chatting. I think we'll just let this go, because... I know why, but... Uh... Oh, yeah. Why Yeah, why is there no surrender, complete self-destructive everything? Basically, because that's a gadget, and I could get it... Uh... Uh, basically, I could get it set up right. Um, I, I did try very hard, but I uh, I need some more work with it. And okay, see, players are used to uh, just leaving in Z or K because it just you know it just it resides on it, and that's the end of it. Um, yeah. And so what I can do is Resign I can just explode. tell the I can just tell the game to end. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. No. Oh. It's not working. Well, whatever. Drone's going to be able to take care of it in time. But yeah, Gode, despite his attempts at politeness, did not quite work out. Actually, what the heck's... Okay, you know what? Forget it. Let's just, let's just all leave, and then that'll work. Oh, it, it, no, he's, he's got it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, and also it didn't count my exit before because I accidentally did it in spectator ally chat, so the server didn't even see it. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, right. I, <laughs> I did that too. I did exactly the same thing. Yeah, I, uh, there's, you know, to some new people have joined, there's a lot of rough edges to this. Um, I, I understand that. Believe me, your troubles have been heard. We know we're trying very, very desperately hard, just kind of stick with it we're trying to help everybody as much as we can as quickly as we can it's been a really really rough two days believe me oh my lord i uh yeah <laughs> but yes it will be it'll be improved because that's how this works is that everyone just sort of throws in a bunch of stuff and then big incestuous code pile results yeah. in something less bad <laughs>